Gig Gab, the show for working musicians, episode 286 for Monday, January 4th, 2021. Happy New Year! Folks, and welcome to Gig Gab, the show by, for, and about working musicians here in Durham, New Hampshire. I'm Dave Hamilton. Here in Napomo, California, it's Paul Kent. I played a New Year's gig, man. I mean, that sort of. Remarkable. <laughs> it's I, I just say, hear those words is remarkable because my group, my band, we sent around notes of condolences. Remember how fun last year was? For, yeah. Man, I really missed that. <laughs> <laughs> so, um, it, you know, the the New Year's gig that I have played for the past few years has been some version that included Rocky Horror Picture Show or the Rocky Horror Show, I guess is what the stage production is called at that at that theater mm -hmm. I play with at all the time. And we didn't do that. They didn't do that this year. And so it was like, OK, well, nothing. There, there was a weird I think I explained it on the show. There was some weird rights thing where. Some other company had the rights to it, but they're not working because most theaters aren't open even for live streaming. And yeah. so, uh, but they had to hold the rights to it in order to qualify for stimulus money. It was bizarre. But anyway, uh, so that didn't happen this year, which was fine. Um, but uh, but they, they put together a live streamed rock cabaret. And it was, it was actually, they, it was really well done. They, they had, um, People singing tunes. There was one band that remained the same all night, four of us. And then, and, and thankfully four really stellar music, well, three stellar musicians surrounding me. Um, but, uh, but people that really knew how to like listen and prepare and, and all of that stuff. So that, that was really helpful. And then, you know, a, a, I don't know, maybe half a dozen different singers coming in and, and singing tunes. And then they had like a little, Letterman's it was sort of like a David Letterman's setup kind of thing where they had a little kind of talk show that was sort of ran throughout. But the focus of the, the event was was the music. It was probably, you know, 70 percent music, 30 percent talking. And, and they kept the focus really positive and all of that it was like, in fact, <laughs> they, the, the direction was, yeah, we all know 2020 sucked. We're going to ignore that for tonight. We're, we're not going to obsess about that for tonight. We're going to talk about the silver linings that, you know, that happened. And they, they did a good job with it. But because of COVID and the way testing and all of that needs to happen uh, or ne and, and needed to happen, we the way this gig worked was we had um, everybody quarantined in their homes for four days before the gig. We all tested when we got to the theater unless we had tests at home we could do but the the mandate was you must test day like the day of the show um which make with which with the tests that we have makes sense you know and and so it was like okay but it meant that we would get there in the afternoon rehearse everything once take a little break for maybe a little dinner and to you know change clothes and then play the gig and Paul, as I'm explaining this to you, this might sound familiar yeah, because absolutely. this is this really reminded me of what you and I did for many, many years, decade plus, in fact, with our Macworld All-Star Band. We would get together yeah. once to rehearse whether we needed it or not. And yeah. and right. And then we'd play the gig. And so in and, and the in the songs were all being selected, you know, via this email trail ahead of time. I was like, right. OK, I've been here before. So I sent out this crazy email to everyone. Because as I started looking through the songs that were appearing on the list, it was like, okay, wait a minute. Whoa. You know, and I, and I, I, I thought it would be good to share some of these things. So the, I, I will share, um, sort of the, the high points and then we can, we can dig through it. But, you know, number one, know your songs. Number two, pick songs with a high probability of success. Um, Pick songs that we already know for a variety of other reasons um, and uh, and, you know, or ask the band if we already know a song, because that, too, can be really helpful. And, you know, on that know your songs thing, I made it clear. I'm like, look, if you pick a song, you will show up at the theater as the person who knows the song the best. So you need you are the band leader on that song. 
So be ready, know the form, be able to guide us. Okay, here we're going into a chorus, here we're you know dropping into the bridge, whatever it is, you're the band leader on that song. And and these are things that we learned, <laughs> you know, the hard way with the Macworld yeah. All-Star Band, but really paid off. People thought I was a little crazy with it, but then at the end of the night, they're like, oh, wait, 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 this, like, that, thank goodness. Yes. Right? Like, <laughs> so you know that um, the, the sing-along band that I have, yeah, is is basically that premise that benefited from all those learnings of what we did to get the Macworld Band. And maybe right. just to back up, you know, for those we, we've referred to the Macworld Band for years. Dave and I put together a group in the day job industry that we live in, because the day job industry that we live in used to have a big trade show with parties, and um, we put together a group to play at one of these parties, which eventually Dave ended up throwing the party. Um, and it was people of varying levels of proficiency in their instrument, all friends, all, you know, professional acquaintances that our friendship certainly went much deeper as a result of this experience. But the premise was pretty much the same. Yeah. It was like, you know, we were fortunate to get one rehearsal. And, you know, I think the hardest thing was the, was the song, you know, discussion as it is in every band of every caliber you know, that thing of what can this band do? Um, you know, people have just different perspectives on the reality of that. So um, I, you know, that, that works for me. And, and what I've learned is, is that there's kind of a sweet spot, right? Yeah. There's either like beginner ish, you know, proficient enough to play players who are determined not to be the weak link. That's a good personality to have on this. They may not be the flashiest, but they will be prepared because they're so happy to be doing a, a project like this. There's the kind of upper semi-professional who's good enough and professional enough to you know get their act together and, and come prepared. But in between that chasm is, is the flashing red light, right? Yes. People who think they're good enough to walk in and play. But as we all know, you know, maybe at the pro level, you get that quite a bit. But if you don't define this as a loose jam thing people's expectations of their chops and their ability to follow along and their ability to actually, you know, make a, a polished ish performance. Uh, that's a, you have to manage that expectation. Yeah. It, it, you, you know, that, that your comment be determined not to be the weak link. I think that's a good mindset to go in with regardless of your proficiency level on your instruments. Right. But, be but as someone who's proficient enough and you're picking people like, like yeah. we knew, and I think in the Macworld All Star Band, we had guys who were closer to, you know, a step above beginner, right? Right. But they wanted to do this so bad, it worked out because they were, you know, they, they were, were driven. They were, yeah, they were, they were committed. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. They, they wanted to hang and they wanted to, you know, it, the, the good news is that even though every gig had one rehearsal, we had many gigs together. So certainly after the first one or even first two, it became obvious, like you didn't, you wanted the gig, you knew experientially, whether, whether it was your first gig on stage with a mm -hmm. band or whatever, you learned that the more prep that the band as a whole, which means everybody individually, because you're not preparing as a whole, <laughs> uh, puts in the better off the whole gig goes and the, you know, it's more fun in the end. So yeah, you could yes. even, and, and I found that for me too. Like, it was like, okay, well we're playing Mustang Sally and we're playing, you know, honky tonk woman and, and, and whatever. It's like, well, but, but if I, so I could show up and do most of these tunes without ever having do do any other work. Right. I was like, but if I spend, you know, a couple of days a week running through these tunes leading up to this show, I'm going to be that much better prepared and yeah. the gigs. And, and now it raises the bar of the, the, the quality of the gig. And in the end, I feel better about what we just created, even though, yeah, I could have just like hacked my way through it. So, so, and, and one thing I learned on this one, most people pick songs that were pretty straight ahead and, and simple enough. Um, there were a couple that were, thankfully fun and also challenging. So we like, we didn't punt them. We decided, Oh no, let's like, let's lean in on these. Cause these are cool. We did um, 
this this uh, Jesse J tune, uh, Mama Tell Me, Mama Tells Me, uh, great tune. And we did uh, Grace Potter's Paris, that ooh la la song, which is, I mean, they're pretty straightforward tunes, but they have some breaks and stops and and things that need to be attended to. You can't just go and play one four five and and you know beginning to end kind of thing. But what I did find was, and again, you know, straight back to our Macworld All Star Band days, was to keep the conversation going. Uh, you know, not for us, it wasn't so much with the singers, although we had to bring them in at times and be like, okay, for your song, what are you envisioning here? Don't, you know, we don't want to show up and find out that it's different than what we're envisioning. But for us, it was really keeping the four of us in the band communicating right. and, and knowing that so that when we got to rehearsal, there were, we, we could limit the number of okay, hey, here's what I was thinking about how to do this song. It's like, well, we can do that ahead of time. Like we have limited time together, so let's do it. And one great example was one of the singers chose Billy Joel's Moving Out. Uh, great song, really fun to play. Hard song. It is a hard song. Yeah. A lot of Billy Joel stuff is yeah. uniquely hard. A, you need a great piano player because the you rhythm do. that Billy plays is, you know. It's totally. It drives the bus, right? Yep. Um, you know, especially is that um is that Liberty DeVito in that? Yes, it was. Yeah, yeah. So yeah. And so here's the thing is a song like that, which was a huge hit and is in people's minds, that's one of those ones where it's risky to come close but not quite get there. And it's not a distortion guitar driven no. song, right? No. So but and bass and drums have to be freaking locked on that, right? locked. That was, that was the locked. thing. And I, I knew the song because I'd heard it a million times and I love the song, but I never really listened to how, like there's two grooves happening in that tune and, and the bass line and the kick drum are playing this almost real halftime kind of thing underneath. Mm -hmm. Like you said, the, the rhythm that the piano is sort of chunking out above that to, to create that big fat pocket. But our guitar player, uh, emailed, you know, as part of our just conversation that we were having, he's like, Oh yeah, the end of moving out, our bass player said, well, you know, maybe you could do like, cause there's that whole motorcycle thing while the piano is playing mm -hmm. its deal. And he was like, maybe you could do something with distortion on the guitar. And our guitar player was like, wait a minute, I have an idea. He's like, what if instead of playing the end of moving out, we play the end of Layla. And it was like, Oh, that would perf work perfectly there. Cause it just starts with the piano thing. And, yeah. and then we all came in, you know, the, the idea was we'd all come in and, and we'd play the Layla head twice. The guitar player would play the Layla head twice around and end the song. But that was discussed by email e beforehand. So the risk of that with a one rehearsal band is what if that doesn't work? What's your, what's your, fallback? what's the, well, we would have figured out a fallback, but the, the, it did work. And the best part was we never discussed it in person. We had had enough of a discussion via email. We looked at each other. It was like, oh, here's Tobin who's going to sing moving out. Are we all good with yeah. the end? Everybody nodded and we played it. And it was like, I hope we all know that what are we all good with the end means. <laughs> like, well, that's that's the key right there. We never right. said Layla. And that nod is is the whole deal. The, and and the when best got part. got it going. The nod is affirmation. The nod was when affirmation. you don't have it going, the nod is like Clueless. warning, warning. <laughs> yeah, exactly. But it did. It worked great. And in, in rehearsal, we ran it once as, you know, as per the rules. And uh, and it worked out great. And then we were uh, in our short break backstage. You know, we was like eating some pasta or whatever that I'd brought. And, and our guitar player was there. And I said to him, I'm like, you know, man, it's New Year's Eve. So anywhere you can find to like throw the old Lang Syne melody into a solo or something like do it, like definitely lean in on that for tonight. That's great. And uh, he's like, well, wait a minute. I could play the Layla lead once and then play old Lang Syne the second time. And I'm like, that's perfect. And so he did that on the fly um, in the gig and it worked out great, but that's, you know, it, it's, we walked in, we essentially walked into the theater in the middle of a conversation as opposed to starting a conversation and I think that's a that was perhaps the most important lesson slash reminder that I got from all of this was, you know, having that conversation going, even when you're not playing, can be really helpful for when you do get the opportunity to sit down and play. Because kind of moving into what we're going to talk about later in the show here is your band will have an opportunity to play. And you'll probably get some warning for it, but you might not, you know, and, and if you've been on hiatus here for a long time, having that conversation going keeps things moving. So anyway, I thought it was fun. It was, um, 
it was it was nice to it was, obviously it was really nice to be able to play and especially to be able to just bash out some some rock tunes and to sweat bet, a little man. bit you know it was good but um we played a we played a great gig last year for new year's eve it was outdoors um and you know in california sure it's a better chance that you won't have it was cool but not sure. cold and uh it was open to the public in a huge public park and, you know, that had a big Christmas display. So a lot of people were walking through one more time for their holiday. And, you know, we played from about 930 to 1230. And um, it was really good. I mean, we've had some really fun New Year's Eve gigs. That That is a great working night, right? I mean, that is just yeah, a great night. It, yeah, I guess. I always hated the drive home from New Year's Eve gigs because, you know, you got a bunch of drunk people on the roads and more yeah. than well, more than that. usual. But but yeah, it is a it is a fun it has the potential it's to a be party. a fun night. It's because it's a party. But every gig should be a party. You know what I mean? Like that's it. There's it, it, I guess, I don't know. I, I feel like there's the potential for a party every night. I think that's what uh, Steve Tyler from Aerosmith, I heard him say once. He's like, man, we're going out and throwing a party for 15,000 of our friends every night. He's like, we got to yeah. deliver. Of course, there were years when they couldn't deliver at all. But, <laughs> you know, that's, <laughs> that, that's, we just sweep that under the rug when, you know, PR is what it is. So, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Hey, um, before we go to uh, talking about this kind of what to do next and, and being ready for what's next, what I want to do is I want to talk about our sponsor. And I'm really happy that uh, we have Banzoogle back because Banzoogle does a fantastic job supporting, giving us musicians the tools that we need to make it super simple to create websites and really, like they do all kinds of things. You could, you need to sign up for their newsletter too, right? Because they're constantly, really, just focused on this community of musicians. Their websites, it's super easy because it's an all-in-one platform that lets you build a beautiful website and electronic press kit for your music. If it's your band, your solo stuff, or both, you can put it all out there because they make it easy. And it's really affordable. You can even host a custom domain name with them. All of the hosting is with them. Uh, they And it's, they've got these uh, fully customizable template designs. So you don't have to just start from a blank page. You get to pick and then you customize it. And it looks beautiful without you needing to be an HTML expert or even ever seeing HTML. On top of that, they've got tools to sell your music and your merch, all commission-free and commission-free crowdfunding and fan subscription features. They can create, uh, they well, they do create their own newsletters, as I mentioned, but they have the tools for you to create your own newsletters so that you can cultivate your fans list and actually put all this stuff together. They take the hard work out of it. Well, they don't take it out of it. They just do the hard work for you. And then let you leverage that to do what you want to do, all the social media stuff. And of course, live support from their musician friendly team seven days a week. But it gets better because as a Gig Gab podcast listener, you can go to bandzoogle.com to try it free for 30 days and then use the promo code Gig Gab, all one word, G I G G A B, to get 15% off your first year of any subscription. That's bandzoogle.com, promo code Gig Gab. Or you can click the link that we have in the show notes that buries it all together and makes it work. Our thanks to Banzoogle for sponsoring this episode. All right, Paul. Yeah. So, about being ready. <laughs> we were having well, a pre-show chat Let me catch up about a couple this. things, yeah. okay? So, yes, the, the tunnel is there. There's a light. I think right now the tunnel is a little longer than I thought it was a couple of weeks ago. Uh, and one of the reasons I say that is, like, where I live, um, I have a friend who's taking care of their elderly mother who got a note that her vaccine – she should expect March. Okay. Uh, and you know, this is a woman in her late eighties and, you know, and I was like, what, can, you know, that, that is just foreign to everything I heard. Can so, I detour you and, for just a second? It, um, sure. I, how many people do you personally know that have had a vaccine already? I think a half dozen, maybe. Okay. Maybe, yeah. Maybe a dozen. Yeah. I'm, I'm at about that number. Um, I, I, I guess I know a lot of healthcare workers around here. Um, so, you know, people, even my daughter's age that have had it, and then I know one guy who is who got it because he is in the 65 and older category. But I think it's about 10 people that I know that have it. So which is which is great. I mean, the fact that it's out there and and like it's I, I don't know, the first one, 
really blew me away. It was like, wait, I know somebody that's been vaccinated. Mm. And now it's like, yeah. I know somebody and they live literally across the street from me and they've been vaccinated. Like that's, yeah, that's pretty cool. It, you know, could it, go faster. I think but, it just feels, you know, all the information I have, it just feels like it's kind of bouncing out instead of rolling out. And yeah. there's I a think, little bit of a, a little bit of a pink flag that it's going to be, because I think you and I, I told you about a gig I took in, in, uh, in September yeah. last time we spoke and you were like, you'll get that gig. And I say, maybe now. Right. Interesting. Probably. Yeah, yeah. I think so. I think you will. But, it, but again, right. what okay. do I know? I mean, I'm no, I, you know, well, like, again, we're, we're trying to read we have, the tea leaves. We have right? anecdotal so, information. That's it. <laughs> exactly. So, so my point is, is that even with that, uh, I'm in the tunnel. I see the light at the end of the tunnel. I'm excited. You know, fresh beginnings are a beautiful thing. I mean, yeah. you're setting your expectations, putting new goals up, all these types of things. I sent a note to my band and I said, hey, and, and I should say that um, uh, I, the band has started a video project, which I think I'll talk about next week. But, cool. But just, you know, everybody's there. Everybody's ready. You know, like I said, we had some funny banter back and forth about missing New Year's Eve gig. But I sent a note to the band saying, you know what, guys? I don't know what it's going to be. Maybe later than we originally thought, but it's coming. I know it's coming. We're, sure. we're going to get back to work. And I'm determined to be the best I can be when that door opens. And so my commitment to you guys is I'm going to start right now, go back and polish up the songs, which is a whole, <laughs> that's a great episode for us to have going back to our songs and realizing the stuff that you haven't, you know, that you've forgotten. Oh yeah. And then you go to listen to it and, and you hear a totally different part than what you've been playing forever. We, we need to talk about that. Sometime. Yeah. <laughs> but, um, you know, physically in shape again, I, I know a lot. We talk a lot about weekend warrior bands and, you know, if you're playing almost every weekend, that's not a bad component to your, to your exercise between moving your gear and playing a gig. And if that goes away, it's a, a big part of your kind of like physical interaction. Yeah. You know, if that's gone, I'm, I'm committed with my band to be ready to do, you know, two, three hour shows again. And that has to start now. So diet and exercise and all those types of things. Yeah. As, know, as we're, I, I decided at the beginning of pandemic that, um, and I've taken breaks off of music like of playing live before none, none by choice, including not this one, but you know, um, I, I've done it and I've always been able to come back and it's fine. It's like, yeah, but you know, I'm older than I was the last time I did that. I don't want to find we out. Are. We all are right. And I don't want to find out at what age it is that it takes me that much more to get back in playing shape. And so I, I've been, I built a a fake gig set list uh, playlist that I could just play along with here. And uh, and I can play for hours at a time with just that or and that's just if I don't have other things that I want to work on or, you know, sure. other things I want to do. But it's just a default automatic songs. I like playing songs that challenge me a little bit, you know, whatever it is going through it. And I even set up a, a mic at my drums so that I can like be singing harmonies because that's awesome. another muscle that we need to keep moving, you know? Yeah. And um, but I haven't been consistent. I haven't been fully consistent with it, but I have been consistent enough. Um, you know, I will take weeks where I don't play and I'm in kind of a funk about, ah, oh, crap, I don't want to play. And then, and then I, you know, and then it'll be every day for, for several weeks. And my chops are better than they were a year ago. So it is working, even though I'm not as perfect with it as I would, you know, I would like to espouse to be, but I'm, I'm not, but my chops are like playing that new year's gig. It was like, wow. I like, yeah. Uh, okay. This is I like, I've, I've got it all together here. This is really nice. You know? So, so I have a premise that, that most people viewed the shelter in place stuff as a opportunity to accomplish some things, learn an app, an app or, you know, recording or sure. And, and, I would hasten the guess that most people fell short of their expectations of what they were going to accomplish with the extra time, including most musicians, right? So, yep. you know, you're going to learn a new style of music. And, and again, I've had the guitar in my hand quite a bit. Yeah. Um, you know, I've learned a couple things. Was I as disciplined and as results oriented as I might have? wanted to be definitely not, you know? Yeah. And so, yeah. and I, I'm again, I'm going to hasten and guess, I, you know, I know a bunch of bands did some video stuff or, you know, some recording stuff and, you know, or they had some rough plans of throwing some stuff on the wall or keeping their audiences engaged or something like that. But, you know, 
did people really think through what to do with the whole time? And now are people thinking through what to do with that light at the end of the tunnel? And so I, you know, made this commitment to my band in a, in a Slack message, you know, kind of challenging them. You know, you guys should you know, join me in this, right? Whatever it's going to take, it's coming. And, you know, the great motivator is always, you don't want to be the guy who can't make it through a gig. You don't want to be a guy who doesn't remember something. We're, you know, we're going to, we don't know how, how much notice we're going to have. And we don't know how much rehearsal we're going to have when the notices start happening. So this whole paradigm is different, you know, for us that, you know, we used to have a very, you know, rehearse from, from January to end of April and then gig a whole lot the rest of the year, recycle every year. And, you know, that, that process worked here. There's a few, the thing we know is it's coming. We don't know when it is, but you know, the, the, the challenge to be chops ready, physically ready, mentally ready, prepared, uh, is something it's it's time to really you know and why not use the r- new birth of a of a of a new year um, as a great thing to kick in the pants and get it going. Yeah, I agree. I agree. I I am I am someone who is very motivated by being able to tell a good story, and and so I have learned that a great thing to keep me motivated is to a decide like what story I want to tell and then get there. Right. Because then the path is easy. It's like, Oh, I want to be able to say that I, you know, during pandemic, my, you know, I increased my chops better or I'd learned this style. It's like, okay, great. Now I know how to like, now I can lay out a path to do that. Another thing that's for me, at least part of that same mindset is creating what I call a to did list. So if something comes up that I just do, I put it like I am. And this, people are going to think I'm crazy, but, um, but I will put it on my calendar and then check it off as a to do. I have been keeping a to did list of all of the things that I have been able to do or done since the pandemic started. Right. And, you know, I mean, it includes the complete revamping of my studio here and like various other things. I find that, very motivating because I can sit here and say, yeah, I'm not doing as much as I want. And then I can look back at the, at my to did list and be like, actually, you know, maybe it's not as much as it's not as long as I want, but there are things on this list. Right. And getting in the habit of, of doing that keeps me focused on doing more, even though, as I I said, I'm not perfect. I absolutely agree that, that the checking things off your list is, and the joy you get from, you know, Xing something off your list yeah. is a huge motivator for doing more stuff. It's a mind hack. You feel good about yourself. Yeah. And then I agree. I always keep the stuff that I've checked off and just can review. Oh, you know, I got quite a bit done. I'm getting stuff done. And that's that whole thing about, you know, a lot of people really hard on themselves, right? A lot of people, yep. you know, never, you know, realize that they are actually, you know, doing, doing more than they think that they're doing. And so right. I, I think that that's a good thing. Yeah. So, so I that's, think that's my, really that's my, that's my tip for this week. That's right. Yeah. yeah, yeah I like yeah. that. Yep. That's yeah. a really good one. Yeah. But yeah, you know, Dave, I think the the light at the end of the tunnel is 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 flashing. Um flickering we'll get a lot maybe. More information every week and flickering, yeah. yeah. Uh we'll get a lot more information every week, you know, moving forward as to what the process is. I still do believe that there's going to be some um um momentum that's going to want things to go faster. I I yes. you know still I still can't quite get my hands and head around the idea that, that we're going to sit around for another nine months and, you know, before normal happens. And I think there'll be rollout to normal and, you know, just because the world needs it so bad. And now someone has its hands around. And so whether that means more vaccines or, you know, the push to get more distributed or more executed, whatever that might mean. Whatever it is. I yeah. still want to believe that there's some inertia, you know, that, that there's some gravity that's going to pull the world faster than, than a, than a next fall. Springsteen said in an interview yesterday that uh, his people, the people he knows says, you know, it's not going to be possible to get large groups of people together. And at least at his scale, you know, 50,000 people um, on uh, in 2021. And so he's looking at 2022 as a touring uh, time again, he put out a new record and he wants to go, you know, play it. Yeah. Right. Um, but you know, and he says he does have other, other projects that he's planning for this year. Sure. So, yeah, I mean, again, that that's the, the, the whole nut nut is it's coming. Um, it feels like it's slower than we enthusiastically thought even a month ago, but there is still this kind of like, 
you know, there's a lot of time in between to affect the process of things that well, I think and we, will come into play. We learn, right? Like the the fact that we both know people that personally that have been vaccinated, you know, at least mm-hmm. with their first dose. I actually know somebody that's had both. Um, mm-hmm. That you know that so that 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 is that means it's happening, right? It's not stuck in a you know theoretical anymore. It is happening in practice. Is it happening as fast as anyone wants? Of course not, right? Or is there as much availability as everybody wants? Of course not. But we've done it, and now you know we humans have proven that we're really good at taking something and iterating on it and scaling it. Right. And so we've made, I, I have, I, and again, I say, we I haven't been involved in any of this. I've been sitting here talking into a microphone, but uh, <laughs> don't give me any credit, but, but you know, we, as a people, I'm sure have made uh, some blunders with this rollout. You know, there's been some missteps. There's been some predictions that, Oh, this will be easy to do. And it turns out, Oh, it's hard to do, you know, just like literally everything else in life. Right. Yeah. But, but the fact that, People have this vaccine in their bodies, like people that we know tells me, okay, we've gotten it from all the way, you know, point A to point Z, right? It, it, the process has worked. So now let's see how many of those, you know, hurdles in the middle we can remove and scale this thing up. And, and like you said, I mean, there's, there's a lot of things that can happen. Maybe more vaccines can be approved and then we've got more production ramped up ahead of those and all of that stuff. And I think if we look ahead, I'm really curious to see what this conversation between you and me looks like the first episode of February, because right. Because, you know, December was get the needle in somebody's arm. January is figure out how to get the needle in everybody's arm. Right. Like, like, you know what I mean? That's kind of how I'm, if I were running the show and again, I am not. So please don't give me any credit. (laughs) But if I were running the show, that's what I would be looking at is like, okay, we've had some success. Now let's look at our to did list and say, let's tell the story that we want to tell in March and now let's go make it happen. So I, I, yeah, I think I, I, I can only hope that that whoever it's an evolving story. I'm sure that people are listening here is like, you know, gosh, we're talking about this every freaking week. Well, it is, you know, it is that thing that's out there that is defining our world, right? really affecting this particular world. Yeah, absolutely. And there are other, you know, angles that we need to dissect and and I look forward to going that, but yeah, as a right here and right now, I just have this reflection that I I'm in the tunnel. I see a light at the head. I can't tell how quite how close or far that light is, but I'm determined. And the things I can do to be determined is go back, make sure I'm I'm ready chops wise, make sure I'm ready physically, make sure I'm continuing to be in the game with the booking people yeah. that I have to talk to, make sure, you know, as the leader of the band, make sure my band is, you know, on some path to whatever they're going to do. I mean, you know, I have, I have everyone in my, ba- uh, no, not everyone, almost everyone in my band is over 50 um, mm. and some older than that. Right. right. And, um, you know, and one guy's recovering from a serious health issue that happened to happen while this was all going on, right? It's, uh, and like you said, and I think I told you, my great friend Sal Segoyan, our friend Sal Segoyan once said, you know, when you turn 50, stuff starts falling off. So, <laughs> you know. Sal does have a way with words. <laughs> yeah, so if, if you've, we've spent the last nine months, um, y- you know, not doing a lot, you're going to pay the price for that. We've had a we've had a year of our performing music collaborating life taken from us. Uh, if you don't want more taken from you, you got to think about what your plan is to be ready. Yeah, yeah, I agree. I agree. Yeah, yeah, and it and and just keep keep moving. Don't don't. I, I don't, in always in always. Yes, yes, that's it. Just keep moving. That's it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, that's what I got for today, man. Yeah. I know All right, well, a good kickoff to 2021. Yeah. Glad yeah. Banzoogle is back with us because I love those guys. Happy customer. Yes. And, um, and uh, yeah, you know, I think it's going to be fun, you know, kind of talking about the experiences of, of getting the balls rolling again. Totally. And, you know, I, I, what I'm really looking forward to is when things start opening up, hearing from listeners about the joy of getting their bands going back again and their experiences. And I'm sure that we're going to have a lot of laughs and, you know, a lot of fun anecdotes as to, you know, what do you do when you have these established things that mean something to you, mean something to your bandmates, mean something to your band family, however extended it is, and mean something to your fans. 
I, I just am so fixated on the feeling of joy when we play that first big gig, you know, yeah, feeling, for sure. You know, oh, yeah. and uh, I, I, there's so much to talk about as we get ready for that. Yeah. I I'm yeah. Yeah. I'm, I'm curious how that, if there will be, if when we look back on this, we will think of a moment or if it will be an evolution to a moment, mm-hmm. you know, like, like, I, I don't, I mean, it doesn't, it doesn't really matter right now. It's just, these are the, this is the way you got to get to the moment. You got to get, well, but yeah, well, what, what will that moment be? Like, is it going to be slowly like, okay, well we did a, you know, we were able to get all of us together and do a live stream and then we had a small audience and then it got bigger and bigger. Like at what point is that like, Oh wait, we're already doing it. Like, great. It's already happened. Uh, you know, like, well, does I'm, it, I'm looking does forward it sneak to up first, on you? You know, 500 plus attendee yeah. gig, you know, that yeah. one, that first gig. Yeah. And yeah, uh, yeah. You know, yeah. Maybe sure. there'll be some smaller ones before that, or right. maybe there'll be some, some crowd limited ones where everybody has to stay in a certain circle or something like that before that, I guess, you know, yeah. and that will be great as well. But that feeling of normal, you know, this is yeah. what I do. Yeah. So that's, that's like, what again. Thinking. Like, I wonder, will we notice it in the moment or will it be like, wait, Oh, this is normal now. Like, okay. Hey, this is pretty good. Yep. You know? Yeah. So, all right, folks. Well, that does it for us. Thanks for listening. Feedback at giggabpodcast.com. We'd love to hear from you. We really, really love hearing from you all. And uh, we hope you're doing well. Happy New Year, everybody. Happy New Year. Always be performing. Always. <laughs>